Now, as we near the end of the Kriya Yoga Meditation Beginner's Guide series, if I recall correctly, this should be video number 20. Um, you do have access to the previous videos. There'll be 21 in total. Uh, so you can go back on this channel. You can probably find them in the playlist if I think to do that. Uh, or you can go to the video section of the youtube.com slash Kriya Yoga Online channel to find the rest of the videos. But um, it should be easy enough for me to create a playlist of all these. But today we're going to be looking at um, what to do through dry spells. We've talked about meditation techniques, Kriya Yoga techniques. Um, we've talked about uh, principles of how to uh, consider relationships and lifestyle. We've explored many of the topics that if you study them, apply them, and put them into practice, uh, you will be doing your Kriya Yoga very well. You'll be living the life. It's not something that you do just in the morning at meditation time. It's essentially something that you're working towards, something that you're becoming. It's a good friend of mine uh, shared that idea with me that he knew an individual who was coming to a meditation group, a Kriya Yoga meditation group, and when that individual was asked, why are you coming? Um, the individual said, because I want to master many paths. And the friend of mine wondered, well, have you mastered any paths yet? <laughs> um, and he went on to describe that the idea of Kriya Yoga or any kind of path or uh, tradition um, it's not about just doing something, going through the motions, it's about what are you becoming. And that each path embodies um, a method, a way, uh, an activity of becoming. And so by working with one and working with it well and intensely and deeply, well then, you do all the work and you don't have to master many paths. You master one and then you understand what needs to be understood. But anyway, um, today's topic is persisting through the dry spells because many people come to meditation seeking escape or they come to spirituality seeking escape from oppressive circumstances and one of the difficulties that can arise is that when they get involved in it and they experience degrees of peacefulness and clarity and joy and they're better able to understand uh, wisdom related texts well then they'll hit a period of time maybe it's a day maybe it's a month maybe it's a year where it just feels like they're going through the motions and it's a dry spell. I recently had a question um, sent to me on the Kriya Yoga channel um, and the questioner stated that they've been doing meditation following the you know, educational guidelines here on this channel for about nine months. It was going very well but then this is an election season and they got very busy with their political work and volunteering and got distracted. Um, and so meditation has become spotty. And the person's been able to get back to it day by day, but due to all these distractions and unpredictability and the perceived unnecessary misery coming from others, um, it's caused a problem for the person to uh, not necessarily be able to appreciate meditation like they did previously. Um, so they go on to say that they're thinking this is somehow related to the poor meditation practice, um, an unprocessed mental debris um, and they're looking for some insights uh, to gain some understanding about this. Well, one of the things that she references here is something that we discuss in um, the Yoga Sutras um, when we were exploring the fourth chapter in the Yoga Sutras in the 26-hour downloadable um, Yoga Sutras course In that chapter, it states that even advanced meditators will occasionally hit periods where mental debris come up and seem to distract the person. But that's just because as you meditate, you're clearing out your consciousness. And when your first gain started, there's a lot to clear out. You can just move two feet left or two feet right. You're going to bump into something that needs to be cleared out. But the clearer you get, the deeper you go into your practice, eventually you start hitting greater spaces of clarity where you have to go three miles in one direction before you bump into some mental debris that you have to deal with. Um, and since you begin to internally expand, uh, eventually you get to a point where you have to go 10, 20, 100 miles in either direction in your consciousness before you bump into mental debris. And what most people do is they mistake that for 
backsliding or a problem when really all it is it's a good thing because you've cleared out so much internally so much of the mental debris um, that just every now and then you might bump into something so it's not a problem it's just something you have to deal with to clear out within your consciousness uh, but when you hit periods where you don't feel your meditation is going well it may be that you're simply just more distracted you've got other things on your mind and it's at that very moment at that very time when you have to more solidly commit to the practice and you know the questioner in this particular case has only been at it about nine months that's not really that long I mean it's good to be at it for nine months so that's first of all uh, we want to celebrate the fact that the individual was able to do that for nine months because some people don't do it more than a day or two weeks um, but when you start doing it like it's duty I mean in the same way that you get up and you take a shower every day you just do it you don't ask about it you don't think about it you don't you know say oh the shower was better than the last shower you just do it because it's part of cleansing your consciousness so that you can appreciate what is really uh, going on around you but the reason you keep doing it the reason you in a sense sometimes have to force yourself to continue <clears throat> even when you have perceived difficulties or it's not giving you the results that you think it should is because <clears throat> it creates a habit and you know as we discussed in the previous um, four-day weekend webinar that we well just completed last weekend you know I've been at this for 16 years which is a long time for some people and it's not a long time for other people who've been doing it 40 50 years but in that time period as I discussed in the uh, the class I've only missed probably about 30 days of meditation and now when I wake up if I don't want to meditate I, the thought doesn't even cross my mind if I'm in a bad mood if things aren't going my way if all I'm doing is sitting there and doing uh, alternate nostril breathing and focusing on mantra um, I just do it anyway it doesn't matter if I don't automatically go into a deep state of nirbhakalpa samadhi I just do it anyway and there's no question about it so the best way to persist through dry spells is just that just to realize that hey sometimes you're going to have these peak experiences like you imagine um, other times it's just going to be like working out I remember when I was kind of studying uh, physical culture you could say uh, exercise processes and good routines and stuff and I remember reading a book uh, by uh, an exercise coach who said you gotta always remember the rule of fives it's pretty much going to be maybe every fifth one that is your fantastic exercise experience and every other one is just going to be you maintaining your current state your physical state and you might find that to be true oftentimes with meditation as well most of the time you're just training yourself the rest of the time uh, the one-fifth of the time that's when you're going to have these peak experiences now these are just numbers I'm pulling out of a book that I read so I'm sure that the averages might be different based on different individuals and people but what I have found is that the way to persist through dry spells is just to look at your meditation practice your spiritual practice realistically you look at it like training you don't look at it like you're seeking the next high you look at it just like you are doing the things that are required of you to develop in a clear self-aware conscious human being to be at peace with yourself and if you think about it this is also excellent training for life because sometimes in life not everything is a joy sometimes you just have to do it because uh, whatever it is that we're discussing here you just have to do it because it is part of your responsibility in this world um, you know as a musician sometimes there'll be days when uh, you play and it doesn't seem very inspired but you do it anyway just to make sure that you maintain your skills and then on those days where that has come together and you have a profound writing experience or creative experience or musical performance it's all worth it right you know, there are texts like um, Tripura or Hasya I'm sure there are probably others that say things like even if you experience clarity for just a moment or if even if you experience clarity of the self just for a second that oftentimes that's enough in the long run to fully free you because you've had the experience you know what it's like 
So ultimately what I would say is if your life is distracting, you might have to forcefully pull on the reins and say, hey, this is too much distraction. It's getting in the way of my practice. So I'm going to cut some things out in the same way that, um, you know, if you have uh, a family member or a child who's throwing a fit or is being inappropriate, you know, yes, every now and then it's okay to just let them do their thing. But in certain situations, you might have to say, knock it off. Just stop. This is not appropriate here. So the same thing can be true with your life. When you start getting distracted, when you start doing too much, when you feel like you're being overwhelmed by the um, mental states of others, you just can't handle it, well, you're spending too much time with them. So you have to back off and say, I need to attend to my meditation, right? I need to attend to my meditation. Other things is just to be realistic about the whole thing, the whole approach to meditation and spirituality in that, um, there will be periods of time where uh, you're just doing your techniques or you're just sitting there in the most boring silence you can imagine. But as I keep saying over and over again, this is all about, uh, this is all about developing um, un unconditional love. Just like in a relationship, sometimes it's not all romance and fireworks. Sometimes it's hard work and sometimes it's uh, learning to grow together. Um, but you still love the partner unconditionally because that's part of the role. In meditation, whether there's fireworks or radiant celestial beings showing up or you're in a state of deep bliss and clarity, or if all you're doing is listening to the rustle of the leaves outside and experiencing a very clear, but what you might perceive to be boring mind, um, well, that's this divine consciousness too, which you say you want to be part of and you want to be one with. So you have to love that as well. You have to love all the facets, all the qualities. And what you'll find is when you can start doing that in your meditation, when you can start treating the dry spells, not as something to avoid, not as something to say, geez, I should probably just give up now, or why aren't I repeating previous experiences? Maybe if you can learn to love that as well, then you'll really get a deep sense of what unity consciousness actually is because unity consciousness is everything. Every experience, every positive, every negative, every dry spell, every um, what you perceive to be enriched meditation, it's everything. And this is part of the discipline of the process that is required. People ask me, why should I force myself to meditate? Um, it's because, again, the discipline to appreciate to have revealed to you that everything is divine consciousness requires that you go beyond the mind, that you're not defined by the mind, that the mind says, well, this isn't interesting, so I'm going to do something else. People who only meditate when their mind finds it interesting are defined by their mind. And the mind is just a small part of creation. The mind is only a small segment of it. So you don't want to be ruled by your mind. You want to be able to go beyond the mind, go beyond the thoughts about is this enjoyable, is this not enjoyable? And go beyond that to that state of unconditional love where you can see and appreciate all of it as a facet of this one infinite consciousness. And when you can do that, then you're practicing yoga or union. Then the fluctuations and changes in consciousness are gone. And all that's left is the seer, or you. You abide within yourself as the seer. And then you are practicing yoga properly, at least as it is defined uh, in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, which is a prime Kriya Yoga text. So consider this. You just need to keep doing it. And if things in your life are getting in the way, then you have to sometimes put your foot down. And no matter how important you think it is, one day you're going to be dead. <laughs> And when you're dead, the volunteering, the distractions, you're going to think to yourself after you're dead, hmm, well, that was interesting, but maybe I didn't need to pay so much attention to that. Because really it's my current state of consciousness which has followed me into this death state, and I should have attended to that probably more intently, since that is the thing that is always present with us, that always follows us, where we are in consciousness. So keep that in mind. Um, 
And those of you who have asked me if I'm going to be repeating the um, Kriya Yoga stay-at-home weekend, again, it'll probably be a once-a-year thing. Uh, we have already done some classes that are, you're able to download them. I mean, there's plenty of stuff on this YouTube channel, right? So you can spend hours just watching the videos here and learn quite a bit. But at astralvedicastrology.com under the Learn Kriya Yoga tab again, um, if you go there, you will find a downloadable course, um, training course on Kriya Yoga. You'll find a downloadable course, 26-hour course on um, the Yoga Sutras. Also, I've been discussing with one of my uh, co-teachers who usually teaches Hatha Yoga with me and we do retreats in Costa Rica and so on. We're going to be doing a retreat here in Boone, I believe, Boone, North Carolina. I think it's September of next year. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll post that on astralvedicastrology.com once I get the exact details of it. I believe that you can also find it at fortheloveofyoga.com. Let me just double check that. So that is Sonia's site, the Hatha Yoga teacher I work with quite a bit. Yeah, for the love of yoga.com. So it's the number four and then the love of yoga.com. And it should be under yoga retreats and events. And it's the Sadhana Mountain Yoga plus Ayurveda retreat. So I will be participating with her in that, teaching meditation, leading meditation sessions and discussions. Um, you can get more information by going there. And she should be updating it sometime soon, reflecting uh, my participation in that. So if that's of interest to you, it's September 22nd through 24th, 2017 in Boone, North Carolina. And you can learn more at four, the number four, theloveofyoga.com. Going to the yoga retreats and events tab down to the Sadhana Mountain Yoga plus Ayurveda retreat. Okay, so you can explore that there. All right, so that'll conclude uh, this particular exploration. And remember, you got to go beyond the mind. The more you let your mind define yourself, the more you listen to the mind. I mean, the mind is helpful for you. It helps you do all kinds of stuff. Have a conversation, remember things that are important, um, pay your bills, write an email, um, plan for the future. The mind is wonderful for all those types of things. But if you only do things because the mind finds it interesting, you're severely limiting your capacity to appreciate the wholeness of life, your sense of self, um, the world in general. So persisting through dry spells is usually typically really about just learning to pay attention to something other than the mind and let the mind have its chatter. Let the mind say, this is a dry spell, this is boring, or you're not doing good enough. Let it chatter away but you just keep returning your attention back to your regular practice and doing your best to live a healthy, conscious life um, as an expression of this infinite consciousness within and around you. So keep that in mind. And our final video, our final lecture within this series, uh, which we'll do here shortly, will relate to once you're solid in your practice, how do you continue in a state of contentment and beyond to stay focused? Mm -hmm.